Great. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for inviting me to participate in this excellent second conference of search source and OCT and geography. Okay. Now we are living in a book of world. Have you ever heard of it? Michael, Rick? It's important to know. Things are changing very fast. What does it mean? VUCA means volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And that's the kind of world we have today. Some examples. Airbnb is leading the lodging uh, business. Now is Uber Marriott in this business. Uber, they are leading the car transport in cities. They are leading this, this, this business. They are surpassing the, the conventional taxi. And applied to the field of ophthalmology, I would say that this, the same happens with all city and geography. Then it slowly is surpassing the conventional fluorescent angiography. With, common, uh, with a good uh, common OCT, especially swift source, we can uh, define the type of CMB, it's very well known. We can assess the presence of subretinal fluid, intraretinal fluid, pigment epithelial attachment. These are the main hallmarks to determine the need for retreatment. We can uh, measure as well the chloride. In some cases, it's thicker, other thinner, it's, it's important as well. But the problem is that with this technology, we cannot see the vessels. And it's important to see the vessels because the vessels are the source of the fluid, of the leakage, are the main, the origin of the problem. That's why we need an angiography. Conventional angiography is the use of dyes. In fluorescent angiography, we can determine the, the pattern of the CMB, the location, the size. But nowadays, with uh, modern OCT angiography, we can assess the same without dye injection. In this case, you can see it's a very small extrafobial type 2 CMV, and it can very nicely assessed only with OCT angiography without dye injection. The same for ICG angiography. We know that ICG angiography is the gold standard to detect choroidal polyps, and it's very useful in many patients. But nowadays, with a multimodal imaging, with the MFAS, technology in some cases, and with OCT and geography, in the choricopulars layer, it's possible to detect the polyps as well without dye injection. With OCT and geography, we can uh, basically determine three different CMB patterns. An active CMB showing uh, interretinal and or subretinal fluid on BS scans, a quiescent CMB with that fluid on BS scans, and a third doubtful uh, type of lesions with mild interretinal fluid with a stable visual acuity. And then in this case, it's very difficult to determine whether the lesion is active or not. In this case, probably everyone would say that it's an active case, showing some clear uh, fluid here. This could be considered a quies quiescent uh, case with no fluid. And this could be a doubtful case with mild subretinal fluid Let's see what happens if we add some information. The similarity between the OCT, uh, the CMB appearance seen on OCT and geography, and a dead or a leafy tree can be very helpful in some cases. Let's see an example. The same cases that we, we just saw before, now we are uh, treating only based on uh, OCT findings, uh, treatment decision based on OCT findings. The first case, we have subretinal fluid, is an active case. The second case, no fluid, it could be considered that is is not active. And uh, the third case, it could be doubtful, with mild subretinal fluid, a stable visual acuity, the same patients, the third patients have the same visual acuity, is a doubtful case. Now the same cases, let's try, let's, uh, based on that please, uh, the first case should be treated. In the second case, no treatment and perhaps a regular follow-up could be considered. And in the third case, no treatment and perhaps a shorter follow-up due to the presence of this mild uh, subretinal fluid. Now let's move forward and let's add the information provided by OCT and geography. OCT the same, subretinal fluid, active, second case, no fluid, quiescent, third, uh, third case, that full. But if we can see here, the first case 
it has the appearance the nose is a leafy tree. It seems to be active. Then uh, this case needs to be treated. The second case, we don't have fluid, but the leafy tree is, uh, is also present. Then perhaps no treatment could be considered, but a shorter follow-up is recommended because it could be considered a risky lesion due to this leafy tree appearance on the OCTA. And in the third case, we have this mild retinal fluid, but it's a clear dead tree. Then perhaps it's not a very risky lesion, no treatment is advisable at this moment, and regular follow-up could be recommended. Then you can see that with the additional information provided by the OCT and geography, we can change our mind when we try to decide if treat or not some patients. On the other hand, it's important to know that the OCT and geography can show very clear neovascular complexes like this, in these cases, in the absence of macular fluid at any time. Therefore, the term neovascular appears to be more convenient than wet or exudative to define, to name this disease. OCT and geography shows uh, basically three different uh, ways to show the CMB. The regular OCTA, the composition image, and the density map. In this patient with this active uh, wet AMD lesion, this DBS scan, and then we can see these uh, different three ways of seeing the, the CMB. With the OCT and geography, it's very important to know where is located the, the, the slab in what layer of the, of the retina we are. The composite image is like a projection of the different layers of the retina. And in the density map, we can see the blood flow. This is a case, this is a chronic case with mild uh, cyst in the inner retina that uh, don't need to be treated. And it's very important to, to know that in, in patients with severe atrophy, like this case, that's, uh, that shows a severe atrophy of the RPE, choroidal vessels uh, should not be mixed up with choroidal, choroidal new vessels. These are choroidal vessels, not choroidal new vessels. OCT and geography shows CMB changes over time following intravitreal therapy. Basically, we can see three different patterns. Progression, enlargement, and recurrence. It was a case, a patient with a type 2 CMV, after three injections, we can see that no fluid is present on the V-scan very nicely. And if we uh, examine the, the OCT and geography and the density map, we can see a clear regression of the new vascular membrane. That is very clear seen here. A similar case, a type 2 CMV treated with seven intravitreal injections, more follow-up, 15 months in this case. No fluid after treatment at this point on B scan, but the problem is that with B scan we don't see the bezels, we don't see the source of the, of the problem. And with the OCT and geography at the same baseline, density of a baseline, a clear regression of the neovascular complex. On the contrary, there's a, a poor responder to the treatment. This patient the baseline with this type 1 CMB treated with seven intravitreal injections, and despite of that, showing uh, more fluid at one, uh, after one year of follow-up uh, on the macula, and a clear enlargement on the area of CMB that we, you can see with the OCT and geography. This is another case, the, 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 sequence, the sequence of uh, different B scans, at baseline, six-month follow-up, one-year follow-up. And we can see here that seems to be a recurrence uh, at the one-year follow-up follow -up despite uh, following treatment. It was a case of rub lesion. We know that with rub lesions at baseline, we don't see uh, normally any choroidal new vessels at the outer retina. But in this case, we see that with longer follow-up, at the one-year follow-up, some choroidal new vessels appear at the outer retina. And this cannot be appreciated only with the, with the B scan. We know that with rub lesions, for mapping the cyst, the, the infas uh, image is very helpful, and we can map the, the cyst. And uh, the, the appearance of the OCT and geography in the depth plexus is also is very, very helpful because we can see the typical shunts uh, that characterize the, the rep lesions. This was a polypoidal lesion treated with uh, three injections, no macular fluid, resolution of the pigment epithelial detachment. And here, in the core capillaries, uh, we could detect the, the polyps with a clear regression after this treatment. Furthermore, uh, uh, OCT and geography can be very helpful 
to, to assess blood flow with the activation of flow mode that shows the blood flow. It allows to assess blood flow changes following treatment, following intravitreal therapy over time. This was the case, baseline, six months, 12 months, and here we can see very nicely that at the six-month follow-up, there's a clear enlargement of the lesion and an increase in the signal of the blood flow eh, that accompanies this enlargement of the lesion. And this is the reconstruction of uh, this case uh, with the OCT, the composite image and the density map, then can be complementary and then can, uh, can give us additional information to the average, uh, to the uh, uh, regular uh, OCTA. Another case, this, pa this patient presented at baseline a type 2 CMB. This patient developed a rip of the RPE after several treatment. And we can see very clearly that this uh, important uh, signal of blood flow present at baseline disappeared after treatment with a clear regression of the nevascular complex despite developing this uh, rip of the RPE and the reconstruction of all these cases. Then to sum up, we could say that OCT angiography is very helpful to monitor CMV, allowing the diagnosis of different patterns of CMV, displaying CMV in different ways, showing CMV changes over time, and helping to assess blood flow changes. Then, as Eric pointed out before in a very nicely way, angiographic examinations requiring dye injections are no longer needed in most patients. Remember that things are changing very fast. We are in a book world. Welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>